Anyone who still thinks and believes that climate engineering is only a proposal from the climate science community should think again and actually investigate what's been occurring in skies all over the globe for decades. Global climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management programs are an absolutely undeniable reality. The ongoing illegal climate intervention operations are decimating the biosphere. This includes further fueling catastrophic forest fires all over the globe. Those who ignore or deny what they can see with their own eyes, the profoundly altered aerosol sprayed skies, grid pattern skies on some days, with nothing on other days, are turning two blind eyes to the immense and ongoing climate engineering threat. Jet aircraft spray dispersions are often seen being turned on and off, which countless film captures prove is occurring in skies all over the world. We're not seeing condensation trails. Jet engines are not being turned on and off. We're seeing intentionally sprayed aerosol dispersions that are a primary aspect of geoengineering and solar radiation management. If jet aircraft are being used, in fact, for geoengineering and solar radiation management aerosol spraying operations, they must have nozzles, and indeed, they do. In addition to military tankers, commercial aircraft are being utilized in the ongoing geoengineering operations, though commercial carrier personnel do not appear to be in any way involved. Why aren't the climate scientists, like those in the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrations, speaking out? In addition to having no First Amendment protection, there is now an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees. Climate engineering programs are nothing short of weather warfare on innocent populations. And how are these operations further fueling unprecedented wildfires? First, the desiccant particles being sprayed by the geoengineers are drying out the atmosphere and reducing overall atmospheric relative humidity. This graph clearly reveals a steady decline in atmospheric relative humidity from the late 1940s when geoengineering programs were initially deployed. Atmospheric relative humidity must increase on a warming world. The laws of physics make this clear. The only way atmospheric relative humidity can decline is if there is a factor that's not being acknowledged or admitted to by the experts for reasons already stated. That factor is geoengineering. Climate engineering operations are completely disrupting the evaporative cycle, convection, wind, and thus the entire hydrological cycle. Extreme drought and deluge is now the norm. We're still being told by official sources that the California drought is over, as this recent U.S. drought monitor image indicates. The drought is over narrative is being pushed to pacify populations, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Just because reservoirs have more water in them is absolutely not indicative of the state of our bone-dry forests that are dying by the day. Fuel moisture in the forests are at all-time record low levels. Why aren't official sources reporting this? When rain does fall in the forests, it's saturated with the highly toxic heavy metal fallout from the ongoing climate engineering operations. Aluminum nanoparticulates are a primary element named in climate engineering patents. Aluminum is a primary element showing up in precipitation tests all over the globe. Aluminum from climate engineering fallout is saturating forest soils, changing soils pH values, poisoning root systems, and killing trees from the bottom up. Geoengineering is also destroying the ozone layer. And this is not conjecture, it's not theory, it's not speculation. Rather, it's verifiable fact. Though mainstream sources are still not acknowledging the climate engineering reality, the catastrophic truth can't be hidden much longer. How many mainstream media sources covered the severe ozone depletion story? Ozone depletion is also occurring all over the globe. Though this depletion is most profound over the polar regions, the impacts are, as already stated, global and getting worse by the day. The now extreme UV radiation is literally frying and killing trees. The damage is most visible where there is the most exposure to the sun. Different species have various levels of resistance to the rapidly increasing UV radiation levels, which includes UVC, the last band of UV radiation before X-ray. But the signs of the UV radiation damage 
are everywhere and easy to see for anyone that takes the time to notice. Rapidly increasing lightning is yet another firestorm factor that's directly connected to the climate engineering operations. The atmospheric saturation of electrically conductive materials greatly increases the static charge of the atmosphere and thus creates an easier pathway for cloud to ground lightning strikes. Though mainstream sources continue to blame increased lightning on planetary warming, the warming itself is not the primary causal factor for the lightning increase. Geoengineering is. The heavy metal particulate fallout from climate engineering operations is coating forests, homes, rooftops, and everything in between. One of the primary elements of this fallout is aluminum. Lab tests from around the globe prove this. Aluminum particulates, or dust, are an incendiary. What does this add up to? Climate engineering fallout is covering the forest foliage and everything else with an incendiary or flammable layer of extremely fine particulate dust. Radio frequency microwave transmissions are another aspect of the climate engineering assault that's fueling forest fires. These transmissions can and are heating the atmosphere and creating high pressure zones and stationary heat domes that accompany these high pressure domes. These transmissions are responsible for the creation of what has been termed the ridiculously resilient ridge that has consistently plagued the U.S. West Coast for nearly a decade. This completely engineered ridge of high pressure effectively cuts off the rain from the U.S. West. The climate engineers decide where it rains and where it won't. They now control the flow of precipitation and thus the flow of life. PBS and countless other sources correctly acknowledge that human activity is fueling wildfires. But what human activity are they not willing to say a word about? The climate engineering elephant in the room. And though all forms of human activity that alter Earth's energy balance and the biosphere as a whole must be considered forms of geoengineering, in regard to the rapidly increasing catastrophic forest fires, the intentional climate modification programs are by far, mathematically speaking, the single greatest causal factor. In this NASA satellite image, the smoke from the fires can be seen blowing rapidly to the west. Even the marine layer is being pushed far out to sea with some jet aerosol spraying visible in the upper left of the image. An ionosphere heater induced ridge of high pressure is fueling the extreme offshore winds that have in turn fueled the firestorm in the U.S. West. Even as some cloud cover moved toward California in the afternoon of October 10th, heavy aerosol spraying was still taking place over the western U.S. and offshore. Geoengineering atmospheric spraying and radio frequency microwave transmissions are creating ever more bizarre cloud formations all over the world and this is clearly visible on satellite imagery for any who choose to investigate. Portugal is being subjected to the same catastrophic climate manipulations scenario that is being carried out in the western US. The fires in Portugal and Spain have been catastrophic. Why would the geoengineers create destructive high pressure heat domes in some locations? Though the equation is complex. In order to manipulate the upper level air currents which spin clockwise around high pressure domes in the northern hemisphere, some regions at minimum must be considered climate sacrifice zones in order for the climate engineers to orchestrate temporary and toxic engineered cooldowns in other regions further inland. Who gave them the right to make such life and death decisions? The military-industrial geoengineering complex is completely out of control. Climate engineering is decimating the climate system from top to bottom. The two NOAA departure from normal high temperature maps below are from the last two months and show historically unprecedented weather whiplash extremes of heat and cold that flip from one side of the country to the other. Climate engineering is weather warfare, nothing less. Due to the highly toxic fallout from climate engineering operations, these operations must also be considered a form of biological warfare. Planet Earth is under siege by completely out of control power structures around the globe. Weather warfare is a primary weapon for them. There can be no legitimate discussion about the state of the climate without first and foremost including the issue of geoengineering or climate engineering. How can you help to expose and halt the climate engineering programs of planetary omnicide?
Arm yourself with credible informational materials from a credible source and share them with the widest possible circle of contacts. The latest completely updated climate engineering awareness materials can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. The effort to sound the alarm on the geoengineering insanity that's occurring in our skies is a burden that must be borne by us all. All of us are needed in the front lines of this battle if we're to have any chance of prevailing. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is the only way forward in this fight. Help us to sound the alarm. We must make every day count. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.